You know, like I said earlier, Gibby's been in my mind um, with respect to some type of position in this organization. Uh, but you know, there was a lot of in internal candidates as well that, that, we, that we looked at. I know I never came out and talked about who we spoke to, who we looked at. Uh, there was a lot of people internally that um, could certainly do the job as well. So you know, Gibby was the right fit for this organization, for this group. Um, and like I've told you know, the other, some of the other candidates that we spoke to, a lot of people can manage, a lot of people can general manage, but who's the right fit? You know, from my standpoint, obviously Paul Beeston thought I was the right fit for this organization, for the ownership group, for, for him and for what we're trying to do. The same way John is the right fit for me, for the group of players and so on. So, um, you know, I, again, I was so focused right there when we were talking. It, I was really focused on that Marlins trade. It had just gotten going. We had just started talking to them. Uh, but I also knew that... Um, I wasn't going to shy away from someone that had done it before, someone who had experience, someone that had ties to the organization. Uh, but I think the big thing I, I came away from was two main criteria, connecting with the players and obviously being able to connect with management as well because you work hand in hand so often. And those were going to be the two things. And there's a lot of candidates that qualified. Um, you know, John was, was the right one at this time. As far as Alex... You know, Alex was one of his assistants, and so he was around all the time, always talking baseball. I mean, he always had that energy. You know, there's something uh, – he's tireless. But he always – he's – you know, nobody in this business has all the answers. I mean, we, sometimes we think we do, but you know what? Everybody's got their opinions. That's the beauty of baseball. Everybody, there's different ways you can do things. But, but the successful organizations, operations, whatever you want to call it, you know what? They, they bounce things off each other, and, he, and at the end they come up with a, with a, a solution. But there's so many ways to do things in this game. And Alex, you'd sit around and talk with him. He'd ask you about this, and we'd ask him about that. But he, but there was there was something there was something different. I mean, he 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 ticked a little different. So, um, but you could tell, you know what? I mean, he was he's an ambitious guy, and he's got some guts. I mean, he's he's not afraid to, you know, take some risks. I mean, he did it with with his trades, and then maybe Beauty's doing it hiring me. I don't know, but you know, I think all the good GMs in the game one turn time or another that are successful, they take risks, and they, you know, they, they go with what they believe in and, and, uh, and live with it. So, uh, Mike Rutzi from The Sun again. Uh, Gibby said that uh, bringing him back is uh, maybe a risky move. move. Do, do you consider signing it, uh, Gibby, a, a risky move? And, and second question would be, have you made any decisions regarding your coaching staff? I can certainly see, um, I think, you know, there's obviously I've, I've, I always reflect on transactions, on what we do, on our process, and so on. And the one thing I think, um, even this past off season or after the season, you know, you go through a rough year, you, you reflect even more. You try to see where you can improve, where things went, went wrong, and so on. And the one thing, just with some self reflection on my end, that um, the things I've regretted most in my time as a general manager, the decisions that I've made, and they've been my decisions, have been the decisions where I didn't follow my instincts, um, and then I may have weighed slightly and I didn't do it too often I haven't done it very often I, I like to worry and um, I just I don't like to feel comfortable I don't um, I just think it keeps you on your toes so you know right now I feel good about the team but I'm you're not going to hear me making any uh, grand statements about you know, how much better we are and so I think we're I think we're better obviously we added a lot of talent um, but we've seen what, what's happened Oakland and Baltimore is two uh, great examples of what can happen but um, I just think we always have to constantly look to get better, no matter how well we're hopefully playing. Uh, that isn't going to stop. But you know, I think right now we can have a very competitive team and a team that, that can contend right now. Um, you know, and obviously everyone's going to say the same thing. The caveats of health. We need to make sure we stay healthy, and that was certainly an example th this past year. But assuming health and players play to their abilities, I would see us being a contending team. But that doesn't mean that we're flawless, and it doesn't mean that there's not a lot of areas that we, we still can improve. I mean, you're seeing everything, you, you're seeing everywhere. And there's really no room for physical, I mean, to get physical with it. I mean, that's just, I mean, that shouldn't happen. Um, you know, that was, that was kind of a black eye for me. I mean, the, you know, the organization didn't look real well after that. But, um, you know, so, plus I'm too old to be getting physical anyway with the guys. But, no, in, in all seriousness, I mean, it, I wish it hadn't happened. It happened. But one thing I will say, you know, I'm, I'm an intense guy, you know. I I, pl I play to win. Uh, you know, I've all, I I grew up. I was raised, whether it's you know from my father, from in athletics down in Texas, whatever it was. 
know, you confront things head on, good or bad, you know. But you, you still, I mean, there's, there's a right way and a wrong way to do that. So, um, yeah, I, I regret that happened. I mean, it, it really didn't show who I was as, as an individual. But, you know what, you make your bed, you sleep in it. And, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate. And I, but also, I also believe you have to, you know, everybody's got to be pulling in the same direction. I mean, you, got, I mean, if you're gonna, you can have all the talent in the world. I mean, if, you, if they don't come together as a team and everybody's got their goals in their eyes set on one thing, that's, that's to win, be a champion. And, you know, you're gonna, you can have as much talent as you want, but it's, it's, you're probably going to come up short. I mean, you, talent's going to get you to a certain point. But, so there's something to be said for that. So, you know, uh, you know I, I don't expect any problems. I, I very rarely had any problems in my career doing those things. Those were just isolated incidents. But, you know, at this level, and they were unfortunate. But, you know, I think we moved on past that. You know, they, that ultimately didn't lead to my firing back then. I mean, it was a couple years later that I got that. And, and uh, I think we actually played our best baseball after those incidents, you know. So is that uh, give you the green light for that? No, that's not. <laughs> but, you, you know, you, you get my point. See now, look at that. You're, see that? You're a hero. You're a hero.